Good morning, it's Terry, and this is another edition of Unearth Your Day. And this is not a gripe session, but it is kind of airing out frustrations because if I could only choose two species to grow, two genuses, it would be Angracums, of course, and Dendrobium lactureus. Um, if I could have two greenhouses, I would have one for Angracums and one for Lacturias. But with Lacturias, it is definitely a love-hate relationship because the ones that I really like that are that I am attracted to, well, I should say the majority of them are warm growers. They like water. They don't like to dry out. Year-round water, a little bit less when they, um, their pseudobulbs are mature. But for the most part, they don't want to dry out and they want warm. But there is a certain group of Lacturia dendrobiums that come from more rain, cloud, forests that is just on the edge of the edge of the rain forest, edge of the mountain range, and they're subjected to cooler nights, um, often um, often uh, fog in the morning or in the evenings that cool things off from the hot days. Some of these are lithophytic, uh, epiphytic mostly, and but the ones that I like tend to be the more temper temperamental ones, the Latourias that I want to collect. Now, you all know that my favorite Latouria is Johnsonia, which I do not have, which I crave the most. And it is still on my wish list, my bucket list. But I've killed so many that it's almost like I should give up. Same with Forbesii. I've tried Forbesii so many times. Forbesii, I don't want to jump the gun because the, this Sunday's um, Botanica A to Z is on D. But Forbesii, which is a beautiful, beautiful flower long lasting fragrant of honey but occurs at moderate altitudes in mountain rainforests which means it gets cooler plus it gets it likes it evenly moist it doesn't want to dry out so that makes it a little bit difficult because it is a mountain it's a moderate to high altitude plant which i am a warm grower and I thought that I would be successful this time with the Forbes CI I got one from Equigenera and it looked good for a minute a hot minute and I don't even know where it is I might have already tossed it here's another Lacturia that is going to get tossed and that one right there but I don't want to show you my graveyard that's not the point. The point of this is just I'll never quit loving them. But there is definitely frustration involved. Here's another example. Rhodostictum. I will never stop wanting to grow Rhodostictum. I've tried so many different ways. I ran out of ways. The only other possibility that I can think of is to get a more mature plant, one that's bigger than an import. So I hold out with hope. And that's just what we do. And I'm just talking species now because getting into the hybrids is a whole nother thing. I'm just talking the species. So really the only thing that has made me have success with the bigger Latourias is the size for me. And when I've, when I've got them, there's always the dilemma of repotting them because you can't leave them in that media. But one thing that has worked with these two, which I've never been successful at repotting, and I've tell me I've tried everything. I've tried mounting them, I've tried everything, is not to even remove it from the pot or, or just cut the edge of the pot out, cut one side or half of the pot out and not disturb the main portion of the plant because 
if you get a plant as far as one of these Latourias that is big like this, you really don't want to risk it uh, by disturbing the roots where it is, where it has been established. And what I did was the pot was, I did, I set it into a bigger pot and then just filled it in with pre-draining material because they want to be watered a lot. These actually like shade. Um, this is my, if I haven't said, this is macrophyllum. This is my spectabile. And this is shirash, shirashai. And you can see how similar they are. And these all come from, from the similar areas on the edge of the mountain range. So they like shade and they like cooler temperatures. And I think the cooler temperature is re related to the mists and the fog that they get in the early mornings or the evenings that cool them down, cool the temperatures down and keep them from getting too hot. Um, and we don't have that here. And I think that is what the big problem is that I've had because it's just too hot, stifling hot. But I think that a bigger plant is always better. That's in Alexandria, which is still another plant that comes from those same type of areas where it likes um, constant water, it likes good light, but doesn't like stale roots, and it likes it a little cooler at some time. And here's the one Alexandra that I've had for years, but I, you know, it's just not been doing well, and so I've been still trying to work with it. This Alexandra, second to uh, Johnsonia, is my favorite. And I don't want to go over these too much, because uh, next Sunday is when I'll be doing this in more depth as far as culture and all that. But there's the Alexandra. And just to tell you, you can see it says low to moderate altitudes in cool, shady conditions on moss covered branches. So what does that indicate? That in cultivation, this species requires intermediate to hot, good air movement, year round watering, high humidity. I would say not everybody can achieve those goals, but it is well worth it to get that flower. And it is a distant cousin to Spectabile, which is pretty much the same culture. Moist. Flowers during the winter. Flowers best when it's established. Hot, steamy lowlands. All right. Let me just go over Johnsonia, which is I don't think I'll ever give that up. And this is the reason why. Large flowers on a small plant. Low to moderate altitudes in mountain forests. So, that definitely tells you a lot about the plant. When you can look these things up, mountain forests often on casuarina trees lining water courses. So, you know, that kind of lets you know that it gets a lot of water, but it's an epiphyte in the mountains, so it is in a cooler location. And I don't have a cooler location. So that's my dilemma. That is my dilemma. Um, but as I've said before, I cannot give up. And I won't give up on my Latourias. This big, it probably would be dead because it's putting out new growths and it never had results like I've been having with my species. The tour is not getting blooms, but I'm getting growths. And this is my bifalque that's just in rock and it's been here. I've had this for a year or two years actually. I got that from Equigenera. So, folks, the other thing is that they are very long lasting, the flowers are, and can continue to bloom off of the old pseudobulbs. And this is one right here that I'll end the video on, Convolutum, which is one of the most floriferous ones and the most, one of the most heavily used in hybridization besides Alice, uh, besides um, Atrovialatium, Aberens, those, but anyway, folks, I hope this was helpful in understanding my frustration with Latourias, but I love them all the same. But 
some I might have to just let go. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Enjoy your kids.